As my time comes to an end, I think it's important to look forward. So I am, as you know, going to be leaving uh, my, resigning my seat as Member of Parliament after the House rises in the summer, um, and to seek a new chapter in my life. And I'm, JP and I are both very, very excited, but very, very grateful. Um, it's truly been one of the greatest honours of my life to serve in the House of Commons, and I can't imagine years ago thinking that this would have happened. So as interim leader, I'm so proud of what our Conservative team has accomplished. I think we're demonstrating to Canadians that there is another way, that there is another party that wants to put their interests before their own. But make no mistake, we have got much more work to do. We need to continue reaching out to Canadians of all backgrounds to make our case for change. And I think one way that we can do this more effectively is by having more women on our team. And I believe that strongly. It's my, it's my intention to help lead a charge at the local level to encourage more women to run for the Conservative Party. As a movement and as a party, we have worked hard since our founding to advance the rights of women, not just in Canada, but around the world. We should never forget that we're the party of the first female cabinet minister and, of course, the first female prime minister. I am incredibly optimistic about our future. Because on May 28th, our members are going to choose the man or woman who's going to lead us the distance. The issues that the leadership candidates emphasized over the last 18 months may have varied, and some of their policy prescriptions may have differed. But they all understand that a government's role is to serve the people who pay the bills, not the well-heeled interests that talk the loudest.